pulled from sources from a different a bunch of different presentations that myself and peers of mine have done. Um, I had a really hard time because I didn't know what the level of experience was here, so I kind of biased myself on the side of the simplistic, but I can go into detail on any of the topics after we get through slides and stuff like that. So it was kind of an interesting presentation to put together. So uh, it's about 30 slides, um, shouldn't be that bad. If you have any questions, just uh, be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, feel free to ask, interrupt. To, you know, are you going to mail your deck around when you're done? Hmm? Are you going to mail your deck around? Yeah, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll email this. The idea was uh, Glenn's videoing, and so we'll have this the video of it, and we'll also have uh, the presentation I'll make available. And um, so, pretty straightforward. So, um, I'm Greg Nidell. I'm a senior mechanical engineer at IFI Labs. Um, it's a subdivision of Innovation First that makes the VEX Robotics Design System. I specifically work on hex bugs. Um, and designing new bugs. I'm from the Rochester Institute of Technology, where my degree is. So I've been doing robotics as a hobby and fun for 10 years. You know, everything from BattleBots to uh, the DARPA Grand Challenge to kind of uh, first first robotics is a big thing that I've mentored for a bunch of years. So it's there's I've kind of done a lot of robotics interests. Now I am in no way an expert at, at robotics. Um, you know, most of my pursuits have been mainly mechanical, and so I'm standing up here doing a drivetrain presentation, um, and I'm trying to learn more about the rest of robotic systems, but I've been able to puddle my way through with that. Um, and I'm an occasional blogger. Uh, my site's robogreg.com. I don't post on it very much, but when I do, it's I think it's somewhat fun. Um, so. Basically, uh, today I'm just going to cover an introduction, just some different types of drivetrains that we're seeing on robots now, and a little bit how they work. Um, just gearing and motors, and just kind of looking at it from the perspective of how do you get motors to do work for you. And then also, uh, just a couple of design considerations as you're designing robotic design drive systems, some things that people falter on quite a bit. So, I always start with a picture like this. Um, because I know it's it's very common to get a a project that doesn't have that final flare and finish. And the ultimate end result is if it works, great. If it doesn't, keep trying. Um, but I always try to stress that you know the mechanical system, in my mind at least, is the easy part of it, and try not to make that the limiting factor on a on a design. So. While hacking RC cars is a great way to get a good platform, and using CDs glued on is, is a way to find some wheels, um, there are other alternatives. And um, I, I, don't, I don't put down projects like this, I just have to give that little thing as far as where I'm coming from. So I, I really broke out into these four major different types of, of drivetrains that are commonly used. Um, differential drives are the most common, uh, basically it's the using two sides independent driving, so either left or right, it's commonly called tank steering, and I'll get into a couple different those. Um, holonomic, motion in any direction, uh, it's a really great way to do robotics, especially in small spaces, and then you end up with some of the more, the other ones like car steering, Ackerman steering, and then like walking robots. Uh, I'm not going to be covering car steering or, or walking robots, there's like a whole different level of, of for, for that. Um, so differential drives, uh, basically what they come down to is a simple platform where you have two drive motors, a left side and a right side, and the difference between the speeds of the two sides, I know, <coughs> the, the difference between the two sides gives you your steering. Now obviously straightforward, both they go straight, reverse they go reverse, and then any combination there by in between gives you your steering. Um, from a mechanical standpoint, it's like the most simple type to build. You can go as complex as you want with something like this that's got like 14 wheels on it, or you can do other simple configurations. So rear wheel drive, uh, typically just two wheels in the back with some type of caster on the front, uh, whether it's a rolling caster or a ball uh, transfer or any just type of slider. Uh, it's a great drive for just getting something going. You've got a motor with a little gearbox, you hook it right to the wheel, and you're pushing. So this is the 
This is the shopping cart version, you know, where you've got, it maneuvers exactly like a shopping cart, where your front wheels are the caster. Um, the inverse of this, of course, is the front wheel drive, where you are dragging. Um, the main difference between the two of these from a robotics application standpoint is what your axis of, revel or your axis of turning is. Um, each one of the axes of turning for these bots is in between right on the drive. So if you've got a front-facing manipulator that you're trying to maneuver right onto an object you're trying to pick up, a front-wheel drive would be better because you're going to be turning about your manipulator or something at the front. Whereas a rear-wheel drive has some performance differences if you're trying to place something far and you need to, you don't have to be as precise with the front of your robot. Um, th some of the, these two specifically are just a matter of taste. Um, so the, the next one is all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Uh, this is another fairly common drive. Uh, basically, it's a mechanical coupling between the um, front and rear wheels. So you would either be using a <coughs> chain drive or four motors, one on each wheel. But all four motors are driving. Now, the problems with, with these types of drives um, that most people have is, is turning. You know, you end up with these two really traction tires, and you and you end up. That's okay. Sorry. There's room up front for them. All right, go ahead. Okay, so. One of the issues with all-wheel drive is, especially if you mechanically couple where you have only have one motor on each side and you're driving both the front and the back, is skidding. You know, you are basically fighting the, the friction sideways on your wheels to, to turn, which is not the most efficient system. And this is a balance of completely of your, of your um, wheelbase and the power that you've got. Now obviously if you've got an extremely powerful transmission, you can scrub across it and get to it, but you'll never have a completely smooth drive. Now some of the, the more complex electrical control systems for these, if you have four motors in a system like this, can do things like correcting and decreasing power to individual wheels. Um, that gets to a level of complexity that I'm not comfortable with, but I know that it has been done. Sure. How you want to handle questions? I'm just <coughs> um, okay. Well, I'm just beginning, so I'm a beginning robot builder. The question I have is uh, where you had a sensor in front of your rear drive or front drive. Mm -hmm. I've seen robots that accomplish this this problem with both types of drives. Mm -hmm. And the question would be, which one will be able to drive faster? The one where the, so the sensor is hanging in the front. Okay. The question would be, would the bottom, would, would the rear wheel motor be able to respond to that? And pop, or would it, this is yeah. a line. This follower. is for like a line follower. Okay. okay. And so, or would the front uh, be better? Um, line follower, you're going you're to want the sensor as close to the front wheel base as you can. Front wheel drive. And this has everything to do with uh, correction. So it's like if you start to drift off the line, you, you want your axis of rotation close to your sensor so that you can readjust and move. Mm -hmm. But I've also seen it done where they are yeah, spread, spread far away. A lot of that comes into how fast you want to go. And how, exactly, how fast you go. You want it further out if you're going to go faster so you can respond quicker, uh, respond to the, the movement of the line before you actually have to curve. So if you have to slow down your motor but still keep your speed, you want it further out from the drive. I mean, you would want a rear, so you want a rear, rear, drive, rear drive for fast ones. So I'm, I'm really a front <coughs> drive when it comes to the line followers, no matter what. But, but uh, the, the distance of the sensor from the robot, you, stick Far, it, you yeah. put it on the stick, right. and put the sensors out there, so you have much more. Okay. Okay. So if you want optimal performance, you would want uh, a dynamic, uh, dynamically yeah. moving sensor, moving or sensor. at the cost of the complexity. So, there are people in the room who are probably way more better at answering that question than I am. Um, um, center drive uh, is one that I actually like a lot for, for just kind of generic robots. It's typically just essentially a six-wheel drive setup, but your outers are your forecasters, so you're only driving in the center. And the reason this puts your axis of, axis of rotation directly in the center of your robot um, gives you maximum orientation. You can turn within yourself 
um, which is something that actually I find to be very, very useful. Um, so the other one that goes along the same as the center drive is the six wheel drive, where um, all the wheels are powered. Um, most times in a six wheel drive, the center wheel is lowered by about an eighth of an inch. And this essentially, when you're turning, creates your effective wheelbase will only be a, a set span, but you'll still be turning about the center of your robot. So that helps with traction. I've got some slides about traction in here too. And then the last one, which I see a lot on robots, is a tracked drive. Um, I will not recommend track drives for almost anything. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that you can do anything with wheels that you can do with tracks, um, given a suspension. And really, track drives just have to do with the level of complexity of the system. Um, the number of parts involved in getting a belt to track correctly on it, and idler wheels, and all sorts of other the other complex parts really don't give it the advantages over something like a six-wheel drive where it's just shafts and wheels. So, let's see. So, I've, I've already gone through some of this from that screen. Um, so basically, uh, differential drive, all wheel, uh, mechanical couplings, um, and this is where you'll end up getting the scrub. Uh, I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to speed through these because I didn't realize I put the order like it is. But, um, so this is an example of a, an all-wheel drive, four wheels. You see the motors driving through the gearbox coupled to the outer two. Um, this robot has a relatively short wheelbase, which is actually better for this type of scenario. Um, honestly, with a four-wheel drive, the closer your robot is to a square, the better off the, the driving will be. The longer, your axis, the longer your wheelbase gets in comparison to your wheel span, the worse it will be at turning. And there's some math I can go through to, to show you how to calculate that. But if you want to go with a four-wheel, four-driven, keep it square, and you'll be better off. Um, so the uh, the next uh, major subtopic of types of drives is holonomic. And this is actually kind of the domain that I've been playing in recently. Um, and uh, it's any drive that provides the ability to move in any axis from a fixed position. So if your your robot is stationary and you want to go that way, you just go that way. Or you where you your robot doesn't have to change orientation to maneuver any direction. So the three different ways that most are accomplished ends up with a swerve drive, an omni driver, and a mechanical drive. Um, the swerve drive is where the individual module rotates about itself. And this is an extremely complex system to build, but if you get it right, it's worth its weight in gold. Um, the main, the big sacrifices with other holonomic drives are your loss of traction and your loss of pushing power because of your, you're basically, you're losing power by moving in alternate directions other than, other than uh, parallel to your wheels. But in this scenario, your wheel is always going to be parallel to the direction that you're moving because the wheel itself rotates. Now there's two different types of these systems. Um, this is called a coaxial swerve drive, which is the power comes from a central motor and is transmitted around through the wheels down through a set of bevel gears directly to the floor. Um, this is the most efficient system, but it's also the most complex. Um, other versions of this have one motor per module. So you'll have like a motor that turns each module and a motor that drives each module. So in that regards, it's complex, but on some levels, it's fairly simple to construct. Uh, but you can push in any direction, drive in any direction, and move in any direction. So it's, it's a big advantage drivetrain. Um, some of the issues that you end up with is um, also turning delay, which is one I've seen a lot. Is that you know if you have feedback on your wheel positions to tell you exactly where you're going, there, there'll be a delay from when you say I want to go that way to when your wheels spin to go that way if you're not turning on the fly. Um, so an Omni Drive, um, an Omni Drive is kind of like the big heading. Um, it uses Omni wheels, which are a wheel with a roller 90 degrees to the uh, axle that goes through. And you can use these um, to create interesting drive characteristics. Um, I have two examples up here. This is the traditional four wheel Omni Drive. Essentially, as, as these two wheels rotate forward and these two wheels rotate out, this robot will move forward. But part of the power is being lost as, as it's slipping. But that's the whole point of an Omni wheel is to